there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and Bible journaler here on YouTube, and today I'm going to be making this bell and gavel page. It's based on a song, and I'm going to share a little lyrics of the song if you want to hear it. The link is in the doobly-doo. I have my sketch done, but let's look at the song lyric and the verse before we get started. The song has, right when the gavel fell, I heard the freedom bell ring through the heart of hell, I'm going free. So go listen to the song if you'd like. The verse is, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this is from Romans. So I did a rough sketch. I put it underneath and then drew it onto this page in my interleaved Bible. The interleaved Bible has blank pages in between all of the pages with text and then started doing my watercoloring. And I thought while I do the watercoloring, I'll tell you a little bit of the story behind why I wanted to do this when I was in church recently. And I wept through the worship portion of the service. I just, I could not stop crying and it was not a bad cry. It was a grateful cry. I was just struck by these lyrics of this song. When the gavel fell, I heard the liberty bell. And I was just thinking about when, when a judge smacks that gavel, so many people hear you're guilty. And I know I'm guilty. I, I'm a sinner. But to hear the liberty bell, to hear that freedom bell instead at that very moment, is so powerful. What imagery is that? that? That's just astounding to me. So I went and researched Liberty Bells and looking at different bell shapes and kept sketching on tracing paper until I got the shape of the bell that I wanted. I wanted the, the look from down underneath and I wanted the words to be printed on the bell because on the a bunch of the different pictures of bells, it had words that were kind of embossed into them and then have the gavel in the background. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do around the bell on the outside at the time when I started it, but I wanted to just communicate that, that gavel there and the feeling that I had, because even if nobody else makes any sense of this page that I'm doing, if I see the gavel and the bell together, I'm gonna to know exactly what I meant. And I've left some room on this that eventually I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it in the video, but I'm going to do a little bit of journaling to just tell the feeling that I had at that moment when I heard those lyrics. Because that song was really powerful to me. So song lyrics are one way that you can get some imagery for a Bible journaling page. Sometimes you don't get the image from the verse itself. But just knowing that the wages of sin is death, the wages of what I have done for that, I deserve eternal death. But through Jesus, I have eternal life. That is amazing that, that God is that way with us. That no matter what we deserve, he gives us that, that freedom. So I did the first layer of my watercolor, and then I used a hot iron and put a piece of paper over it so it would, be, it would keep it clean. That's mostly why I put the paper over it. I don't want to get the paint smooshed around by the hot iron. And I decided I was going to put kind of a brownish, bluish, kind of weird color in the background here. I painted something else recently and I had a, you know, a really kind of dark blue-brown sort of color. And it's very ominous and I thought it would be really helpful in a situation like this because I wanted that feeling that in the background that that gavel is surrounded by dark muddy colors, angry colors, colors of condemnation, but the bright bell that appears in the front, the, the bright strong colors of that will be in stark contrast to the rest of it. So the bell is gonna be swinging forward and, and celebrating that life that I have instead, which I don't deserve, but I have it and hallelujah for that, right? I knew I was going to add some outlines and things for the black pen when I'm done. And often I do that. You may have noticed in a few of my videos that I start by painting using my pencil lines and then I add my, my black and white lines later if I'm gonna add some, some pen lines and things. 
it gives me the freedom to sort of figure out what I'm going to do. And especially right here, I, I wanted the gavel to look at, like it was smashing down. It was hitting the surface of the table. So I kind of made those lines. It looked kind of funky, didn't like it. And I thought, well, what if I blend in some red to so make it, you know, look really icky back there. And then that started looking really weird. But, you know, that's just the way how it is. On Bible paper, fortunately, it's slick paper. It's not like watercolor paper. Watercolor paper may not be as forgiving as this because I can take that baby wipe and it's a fairly damp baby wipe and I can pull a lot of color out of this and smoosh color around and stuff. Even after it's dry, you can move watercolor with a baby wipe quite easily. So if you have some areas that didn't work out, you can remove some color and fix some of that. And so I'm constantly adjusting as I'm painting and adjusting my edges, adjusting the shape of the bell or the curve around something. So if I save my pen lines for later, it allows me to sort of establish all that using my brush, my watercolor first, and then tighten it up once I get to the very end. And I wanted to have some really rich, dark color. You have to be a little bit careful on Bible paper when you get rich dark color because it can kind of build up and feel a little bit chalky pretty quickly. If you don't end up um, kind of blending it in a little bit, I have a few spots on this where I had to pull a little bit of color out because I got a little bit too thick, too chalky and weird. Uh, it still doesn't bleed through the back. There was only, I think, two brands of watercolor that I found that bleed through so watercolor is pretty safe uh, for not bleeding through the page. And that was Peerless watercolor. And then there was a Crayola, a specific kind of Crayola. I don't remember which one, but I was very surprised to find that these cheap Crayolas went right through my paper as well. But for the most part, watercolors are pretty safe to use on, on your Bible paper. I don't use any page prep, as I've said before. I'll mention more times because I get lots of questions about it. Page prep to me is just more work, more effort, etc. And as you can see, I'm doing just fine painting away and I, I'm not having a whole lot of ma massive issues with wrinkling or anything. I've used page prep on some things and I still end up with wrinkling and curling. So I'm not really sure other than using mediums that bleed, um, for me, that it's really not all that much help. I'd rather just focus on the mediums that do work well and not try to make my Bible work with mediums that don't work with it because I'm plenty happy with my pencils, my watercolor pencils, and my watercolors in order to create what I want to in my Bible. So now I can take out that page underneath. I always keep, uh, well, I shouldn't say always, I usually keep a piece of copier paper underneath of what I'm working on, not because I'm trying to keep anything from the next page since things don't bleed, but it helps if I go over the edge a little bit that I don't drip down the side of my Bible. So that's what that was for. But here I'm putting the lyrics of the song down on here and you can find the lyrics of most any song, even if it's a song like this one, I didn't know the name of it. I just knew that there was that phrase. So I Googled for, um, freedom bell and something else. I don't remember how I found it, but I found the lyrics quite easily online that way. So you can find things even if you were not sure of them, or if you had a Bible verse in mind and you knew it had a certain something. I use Bible gateway for the most part for a lot of my online searching because you can set it for whatever version of the Bible that you want to translate. And I like the, the way the website works and things. And uh, you can do searches in there with just keywords and get a lot of good direction on finding both scriptures and lyrics, etc., to use for your Bible journaling. And notice that I have my little pencil lines under there, but I'm seriously not worried about it. I, I, a lot of people get stressed out if they aren't letterers, and I'm not really a letterer. These are not done really straight. You know, when I looked at it when I was done, I thought I didn't do the best job of that. I do sort of sketchy letters when I'm doing these big heavy letters. But really, this is an act of worship for me. And it's it's me and God having our worship time together and me 
taking notes on something that was really powerful for me. I haven't had a time in, in church when I just absolutely bawled that way in quite some time. And I didn't want to lose that. It was such a freeing cry. And I really needed it. I, I've just been feeling burdened lately by so many things. And to experience that freedom and the reminder of that freedom, it's not like that set me free, but I, I tend to forget we are humans and we leak and I leak. and I, I forget those truths about being free. And one of the other things too that happened during that, that particular service was one of the pastors got up and said, this lyric says, I'm going free. It's a process of getting free. It's not once and for all, bada boom, bada bing, everything's all better. It's just, it's a step-by-step -step process. And that was a good reminder too. But I got to this end part and I still didn't like how that red was blending into that background. But look at that. I could take that dry paint and move it with that damp baby wipe and even get rid of some of those chalky, heavy areas that I had up in that background, move that around even after it was dry which I really like that about watercolor. So give a little bit more intensity to some of the shadows now on my bell. A few of the areas that got a little wishy-washy over time. And for the most part, if you put a background in like this one, I have this rich dark color in the background. It's going to make everything else in front of it, all the lighter colors that looked like they had a lot of contrast before, it's going to make them look like they, they weren't as contrasty. So you'll often uh, do better to wait until the end and then add a little, more, little bit more contrast if needed as you finish up your piece. And that's usually my finishing touches is to be able to do that kind of a thing. And by the way, I am using Daniel Smith paints. They are um, all linked in the doobly-doo down below, the description area. And I wanna give you a heads up, I believe next week, depending on when you're watching this, I'm going to be doing a whole gift series here on this Bible journaling channel with Christian themed gifts and decorations. So be sure to take a, a little time to subscribe to my channel so that you can come back and get lots more ideas. The holidays are coming and I wanted to share some things that I'm going to be making this holiday season for friends and family, etc., for gifts and for decor and would like to invite you to do the same. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to watch this video, and I will see you again in a week. Take care. Bye-bye.